Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. So a factorial for a whole number is when you take the product of that number with all the other positive integers below that number. And we write factorials with an exclamation point after them. So um, there's no positive integer below one, so it's just one factorial is simply just one. Two factorial, you take two times every positive integer below it. The only thing below two is one, so two factorial is just two times one. Three factorial is where we start getting more of a list, right? There are a couple of positive integers below three, so three factorial is three times two times one. Four factorial, you start at four and multiply by all the positive integers until you get down to one. Five factorial, you multiply five by all of the positive integers until you get down to one. So if we just go back real quick and say what these are, so obviously one factorial is just one for this one, two factorial two times one, that's going to give us two for this one, three times two times one for three factorial, that will be six, four times three times two times one, so four times the previous one, six times another four will give us 24, and then five factorial, I'm just taking my four factorial multiplying by five, so taking 24 multiplying by five, that will give me 120, so those are just some values for the first few of these. Some examples here, so if we want to find the values for these uh, six factorial, that means we will start at six and we will multiply by every number below six, until we get down to one. Six times five times four times three times two times one. Um, and I know that this part here, I guess, from the last one was 120. So if I take 120 times six, then this one may be a little bit of a shortcut for me there. I get 720 for this one. Nine factorial, these start to get big pretty quickly actually, right? So this is gonna be nine multiplied by all of the numbers below nine going all the way down to the number one. And we'll get that, and so we already knew six factorial was 720, right? But then we have to multiply it by another seven times eight times nine. And if we do that, we might wanna use a calculator. That one becomes pretty big. That's actually 362,880 for that one. You can see these get big pretty quickly, right? So for n factorial, that's just saying for some general number, how do we evaluate a factorial? If you look at, say for example, 9 factorial, we start at that number. So for n factorial, I would start at whatever n is. And then here I'm just multiplying by one less, and then one less than that, and one less than that. So after n in my list of n factorial would be n minus 1. That would be one less than n. And then what would be one less than that? Well, I'd have to multiply next by n minus 2. Right, and I would keep subtracting more stuff. Right, The next term would be n minus three, and we would continue that pattern right, all the way until we got down to three times two times one, right, whatever n is. Uh, so a similar thing here, if I start at, say, n plus two, and that's my starting point, then I'm gonna multiply everything below n plus two until I get to one, is what this says. So n plus two factorial is gonna start at n plus two. The next thing we multiply by will be one less than this. One less than n plus two would be n plus one. And then one less than this would be my next term, which would just be plain old n there. And then it's gonna kind of copy what's going on here, right? What's after n? Well, one less than that would be n minus one. And what's less than that would be n minus two. And we'd keep doing that whole pattern, right? Until we got down to one. Uh, so let's go ahead and simplify these. Here we have seven factorial on the top and three factorial on the bottom. So seven factorial divided by three factorial. So on the top, I would have seven multiplying every number below it. That'd be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And on the bottom, I would just have three factorial starting at three and going down to one. Uh, you can probably see then that once we get to the matching three times two times one, all of that can reduce. I guess really one and one don't really need to reduce. So that would just be left with seven times six times five times four. So here we'll get 840 for this one. 
For this one on top, I will have 8 factorial, which is 8 times 7 times 6, all the way down until we get to 1. It's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then on the bottom, I will start at 5 and multiply all numbers below that until I get to 1. And so reducing here, we'll start at the 5, right? 5 over 5 would be 1, 4 over 4 would be 1, etc. The 3s reduce, the 2s reduce. I'll go ahead and say that the 1s reduce, they really just reduce to themselves. Uh, so we get uh, 8, 7, and 6 are the only things on top that were not reduced, right? Everything starting at 5 reduced. So you can see a pattern here, right? This first one, uh, you'll notice that 3 is the smaller factorial, so everything from 3 onward reduced so we were just left with seven six five four in our list of things that are multiplying here with eight factorial and five factorial we start reducing at the smaller factorial five and so everything five and below is going to reduce just leaving us everything starting at eight and going down to but not including this five here because we'll start getting reducing at five so here we get eight times seven times six and that gives us 336. Okay, so a similar thing here with just general statements involving n, for example. So if you think about n factorial, starts at n, and then it would have one below that, and one below that. And so I'm just using the factorials from earlier that I wrote down before in the previous examples. So I would just keep multiplying by a bunch of stuff below n, one less and one less until I get down to one. And then for n plus two, we're going to start at n plus two. And one less is n plus one. And one less than that is just n. And then we'd have n minus one, etc. All the way until we got to three times two times one. n might be really big, it might not be really big. We're just saying in general. So if you look here at what starts to reduce, similar to the previous examples, uh, which one of these is smaller? Well, the one without the plus two is smaller. So we're going to start getting factors reducing at the smaller factorial, right? You'll notice n plus two, there's no n plus two on the top, n plus one, no n plus one on the top. But as soon as I get to n, which is where the smaller factorial is, I start getting factors that reduce n reduces, n minus 1 reduces. I didn't really write n minus 2 because I stopped listing them, right? But n minus 2 is also going to be in this list down here after n minus 1. n minus 3 will be in this list as well. Everything is going to match all of the stuff in here down to 3 and 2 and 1. Everything is going to be in both lists, right? So the only thing that is not in both lists was the n plus 2 and the n plus 1 on the bottom. In other words, the factors that were bigger than the smaller factorial, right? So we just left with 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 for this one. For this one here, I have n plus 1 factorial on the top, so I'll start with n plus 1. I'll get one smaller, which is n. One smaller is n minus 1. One smaller is n minus 2. Let's list one more. Uh, n minus 3, etc. Skip a bunch and then we get down to three times two times one. That is my representation of n plus one factorial on the top there. On the bottom, I'm starting at n minus one because that's the factorial I have. So one smaller than n minus one is going to be n minus two, n minus three, et cetera, n minus four, and we'll skip a bunch. And then we'll have times three times two times one. I recommend for you just writing out as many factors as you need to see where things start reducing. Again, a shortcut way is to say which one of these is smaller. Well, I can tell n minus 1 is smaller than n plus 1. So I'm going to start getting factors reducing starting at the smaller factorial n minus 1. And you can see that here, right? n plus 1 has no match on the bottom and has no match. But as soon as we get to n minus 1, then we start getting this massive amount of canceling, n minus threes would reduce, n minus four would reduce with the one I didn't write up here, right? Everything down until three and two, et cetera, is going to have a matching partner on the other side of the fraction bar. So here I get uh, two factors left, but I get them on top. So I'm just going to go ahead and say n plus one 
times n for that one. Okay, hopefully that gives you an idea of factorials, the basics, how to simplify them, particularly when we're using them maybe for some sort of a sequence and generating some terms, how some things might reduce for those. All right, good luck with your factorials, everybody.